Already? I'm waving at him. They're not waving back. Mr. Allison, Ms. Giles, can you hear me? Here we go. Yes. Yes, sir. I can. Okay, good. Yes. Then I will call this meeting to order. Uh, this is the meeting of the Greenwood County Council, Tuesday, January the 4th, 2022. Council has been in an executive session since 4 o'clock this afternoon discussing various matters of business. Uh, we do not have, do we have any, we have business coming out of it to be dealt with? Yes, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we extend the Greenwood County's COVID leave policy based on, excuse me, based on the Federal Families First Coronavirus Relief Act through July 1st of 2022 to continue the same county policy and keep but not expand the 80 hour COVID leave bank for each employee. Okay. We hold that motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. Do we need to come out of executive session first right. before we can vote? Okay. Then I'll need, hold your motion there, Ms. Tilton. I need a motion now to come Somebody. out of executive session. Mr. Pruitt offers second. that. Mr. Temple second. seconds. All, second. All, thank you, Mr. Arms. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, those opposed. Then we are now out of executive session, and we will deal with the motion that Mr. Templeton made concerning the COVID leave act. You want to read it again for us, please, sir? Be happy to. I move to extend Greenwood County's COVID leave policy based on the Federal Families First Coronavirus Relief Act through July 1st, 2022, to continue the same county policy and to keep but not expand the 80-hour COVID leave bank for each employee. You've heard the motion and Mr. Al Mr. Lane seconded. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Sorry. Any questions, any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Those, aye. those opposed by the same sign, then it is so ordered. Thank you very much. Now we are ready for our public meeting. We thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate your presence and your interest in your local county government. And uh, we hope the meeting is helpful to you. We will begin tonight with an invocation from our Vice Chairman, Mr. Theo Lane, representing District 7 for the county. Following Mr. Lane's invocation, we will all pledge our allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. So, Mr. Lane, if you're ready, let us stand and off the invocation. Thank you, Chairman. Pray with me, please. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight with grateful and thankful hearts. We thankfully acknowledge all the blessings that you bestow upon us, those blessings that surpass our ability to even comprehend. We are thankful, we are thankful for the promise of a new year, and we pray that our future will be guided by your word. We give thanks also, Heavenly Father, for our newly elected council member, Mr. Dane Pruitt, duly elected by the people of Greenwood County, we ask that you bless him as he enters into this service and bless his wife, Miss Tracy, and our council family. We come to you always grateful fathers, free Americans, and we pray for your hand of protection upon all who serve us, who place themselves in harm's way for our protection. Here locally, police, fire, EMS, and around the globe, our armed forces, men and women, who sacrifice to preserve and defend freedom. Lastly, Heavenly Father, may our thoughts, deliberations, and actions be pleasing in your sight as we devote ourselves to serve the people of Greenwood County. For this, we give thanks and praise in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. You will note tonight that uh, Councilperson Childs and Allison are visiting with us or joining us by way of uh, Zoom. Uh, they can hear us and we can see them and hear them as well. We appreciate that very much. 
Uh, first item of business is the approval of our minutes from December 21, 2021. You have all received those minutes in your packet. You have had a chance to review them. Will there be any corrections or deletions? If there are none, I would entertain a motion that we approve the minutes as they have been presented. Move to approve. Ms. Spencer makes the motion to approve. I need a second. Second, Chair. Second by Mr. Templeton. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Good. Then that is so ordered. We have no presentations tonight. There are public comment. We've already explained that process to those who signed up. So we move to old business and we have a public hearing scheduled for old business tonight. Uh, and I'll need a motion from council that we enter into a period for public hearing. So move, Mr. Chairman. There's a motion second. and a second. Mr. Templeton, Mr. Pruitt, all in favor, raise your hands. I got them raised, all closed. Then we are now in a period of public hearing. And the first item for our public hearing is the second reading for Ordinance 2021-33. This is an ordinance to change the zoning of a piece of property at 121 Cannon Road from R1 single family to AG1 Agriculture. Uh, is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of changing this piece of property zoning from R1 to AG1? In favor. Yes, ma'am. Come forward and state your name and where you live and have your say. My name is Maddie Robertson. Mm -hmm. I live at 1129 South Main Street right now. Okay. The property in question is, is the property that I own. So okay. I'm just going to thank you for hearing. Sure. Uh, I'm just going to give you a, a brief. Uh, speak up just a little oh. more. Thank you. Can you hear me now? A little more. A little bit. Can you speak hear me louder, now? Louder, be okay, is that better? That's much better. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to try to go down the timeline and I'll try to stay within my... You have okay. three minutes. Three minutes? Okay, all right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that my daddy also lived on Cannon Road until he died. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, the land in question, it came up for sale uh, back in the <coughs> back in 1995, 96. At that time, I wasn't able to purchase that land. I was living out of town. I hadn't lived here for 47 years. Um, we wanted to purchase land so that when we retire, we could move back to Greenwood. So um, the land was up for sale. In 95 and 96, the person that uh, bought it bought it for a tax write-off. At that time, I wasn't able to purchase that land because I had two sons in college, and we had bought another house, so my husband and I had to take care of that. So uh, my dad passed away. Later on, my sister moved into the house, my dad's house on Cannon Road. Uh, and then the land came up for sale again in 2018. In 2018, we were able to purchase that land. Uh, so we purchased the land. Uh, and plan to move up and put a house on that land and live here in Greenwood. Well, um, after purchasing the land, uh, making plans to move, my husband got sick and passed away. So uh, once I completed everything in Alabama, because we were in Alabama, so once I completed everything there, I moved here to Greenwood mm -hmm. to put a home on that land. Well, after, after getting here, it looked like everything just went downhill. Uh, once I moved here, uh, we were trying to get things in order, you know, in order to get my get my house out there. Well, the house we were living in caught on fire. So we had to move uh, into a rental home, we, which, where we are now. Uh, uh, while we were in the process of doing that, I had to have knee surgery, so I couldn't work on 
getting a home at that time. Once I went to the knee surgery, the first one, then the pandemic came along. So I couldn't do anything because they weren't doing anything at that time. While we were, well, going through the pandemic, kind of in quarantine, uh, I did some searching as for homes. I'd look for a modular home. And when I put in for a look, you know, search for a modular home, they gave me Clayton Homes. So I contacted Clayton Homes and I did go out to meet with them. And they told me at that time, they were not doing modular homes anymore. He said what they had was a manufactured home, which was on the same line as building a home. Okay. So uh, I looked at that, you know, uh, I did like, I found one that I really liked. So we um, went through the uh, process of getting me into that home. Well, before I could get into that home again, I had to have knee surgery on my other knee. So that kind of put me um, um, behind again. So once I got that done and was able to get back on my feet, I went back to Clayton. I picked out the home I wanted. We even, uh, I went through the closing, did everything I needed to do. When I went to get a building permit to put my home out there, then the, uh, the ladies in the office there said there was a zoning problem. And that's why I'm here today. I, um, I bought that land to move here and to live in Greenwood. I'm only asking for 1.9 acres to be rezoned. That's enough land for me to put my home, do everything I need to do, and I won't be building up close to anyone else. The manufactured home that I'm planning to build um, I'm going through VA with that, of course. Um, VA has certain specifications for homes. Yes. They do not uh, back a, a trailer, a mobile home. However, they will back a manufactured home. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Mouth is dry. So that's why I'm here today. I'm here to ask you to rezone that 1.95 acres of land, even though I do own all the other land around there. It's just that area right. that I need, it, just a spot so I can put my home and live. I mean, I'm, I've been paying rent now for going on three years. Right. And that's thousands of dollars down the drain. That's thousands of dollars I could have spent in my own home. I did some things that I wanted to do. So, um, asking you to reconsider okay. and uh, approve the 1.95 acres so that I can place a home out there. I did bring you a picture of a one of the homes um, they did just recently and that is a manufactured home. It's not the one that I'm uh, getting but it's a manufactured home. Mm. Uh, a lot of the details, if you look, is the same as building a, uh, a regular home. I think that's good. Okay. I think that's all I have to say. In three minutes should be about. Right. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you saying that. Okay. Thank you. Can't have any questions. No, I do, Jeremy. Just man, before you sit down, is this is this photograph that you're photographing showing that's similar to what you're going to be? That that's one that they've completed. The one I'm gonna be is a little bit um, more contemporary, I, I would say. I have a, a big porch. Okay. Um, How many um, total acres of land you want this man? Uh it's sixteen point seven acres. And all that is connected to the 1.9 acres that I, 95 acres that I need to get rezoned. Uh, I'm, I'm not planning to, one lady had questioned whether I wanted to put a mobile home park out there. And that's something I am not uh, planning to use that right. land for. Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Ms. Charles, Mr. Allison? No, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine. Good. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else like to speak in favor of this zoning change? In favor. Anyone here like to speak against changing the zoning? Please come forward. Against the zoning only on property on Cannon Road. I'm fine, Cannon. And I just get the sign in. I'm just a little bit late. That's fine. Are you here to speak to this? Yes. Then come forward. Uh, is he for or against here? Are you for or against this? Can I speak in the behalf of both? You're speaking in, in behalf of both people? Of both. Right. Or, and on both sides? Right. Just well, me. okay. I have not went into trouble that before. <laughs> I've met I other know. folks who speak out of both sides of their mouth. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been involved in some things today that I haven't been in. Well, well, let's, to, let's begin by speaking in favor of it, and then afterward we'll hear your opposition. Thank you very kind. Clyde Cannon, um, wait. speaking in behalf of... Oh, wait, sorry. you need to tell your name and where you live, I'm sorry. Okay, Clyde Cannon. Actually, I live at um, 218 Dixon Drive uh, with the Hodges address, but our home property okay. is the, uh, Cannon Drive. Okay. Um, speak in favor. Speak in favor of the 1.9, and that is the subject for tonight. Yes. Only the 1.9. Yes, 1.9. Right. 1.9. Um, what I like to say in favor of it is uh, I think the code for the manufactured home is AG3. Is that right? Mr. Leather, you have to respond to that. He's asking if the, the zoning for AG3 permits manufactured home. Is that what you're asking? Yes. It does. It does, yes. Okay. And with that in mind, and we're only speaking in terms of the one point. Yes, nine that's clear. Eight. All right. Uh, that I would be in favor of. Okay. Uh, the manufactured home. As long as it would be under the AG3. Strictly the 1.9. As far as um, against, um, we just want to make sure that the other, I believe she said 16.7 acres. Yes, the remaining part of the land. Right. Um, if anyone else will happen to, and I heard uh, Sister Robinson say that her intent was not to have any mobile homes on that property. Yes, that's if true. anyone else would um, have access to that property, shall I say, um, would they have to go through the same process in order to? Yes. Okay, yes. they would have to come through this process. All right. Well, well, my only concern is, and, 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 and I'm speaking in behalf of both, shall I say, but I'm okay with the AG3. Okay. For the 1.9. But you, but you understand we're changing it from AG3 to AG1. AG1. Okay, AG1 is considered, um, if it's AG1 and someone else came in and took over that property, for instance, yes. they could convert it to the other part of that property to a mobile home park, right? They could only deal with 1.95 acres that we would change the zoning. Okay. Everything else around it, to my understanding, remains R1. Remain, um, yes. Will remain R1. Yes, it will not change unless they come before the zoning commission again and request a change. Okay. What would be, what would be the outcome, for instance, if the 1.9 would be labeled AG3. Mr. Lindley, you'll have to explain the difference here between AG1 that is now being proposed and AG3 uh -huh. that he's raised. Can you do that for us, please? Yes, sir, I can do that now or wait until after the public hearing, whichever you prefer. Uh, let's do it now since it's right here on front of us. Thank <laughs> you. 
the, the difference between AG1 and AG3, AG1 allows for manufactured homes, modular homes, and single family residential stick built homes um, at uh, a very small lot size, up to 7,500 uh, square foot minimum lot size. AG3 allows for uh, manufactured homes and single family residences at one acre. Uh, the AG1 category allows for mobile home parks with a certain amount of acreage whereas the AG3 does not allow for manufactured home parks at all. That's the main difference. From what, I'm, from what you're saying, I'm hearing that based on Ms. Robinson's testimony, that AG3 would be more compatible with her interests than AG1, mm -hmm. and also the interests of the neighbors right. or the other folks. I, I can't speak for her, but it would allow for what she's wanting to place on that property. And it would also hinder any mobile home park talk. AG3 would, yes. Right. Okay. Yes, go ahead and ask a question. Uh, in reviewing the packet, the zoning board voted, but their vote was yeah. that it be requested to go AG1, right? Uh, the zoning committee did yeah. recommend that, the, but the planning commission recommended denial on the request. Okay. What was the denial based on? Uh, opposition from the uh, public, uh, spot zoning, as well as um, uh, covenants and restrictions uh, within the development uh, or the neighborhood that prevents yes. manufactured homes. Mr. Chairman, yes, go ahead. So, Phil, the, the denial is based on the request for, for AG1 for the reasons you just said. Yes. But if it were AG3, as Cannon pointed out and we discussed here, that would alleviate that concern, is that correct? It would not alleviate the opposition. It would not alleviate the issue with covenants and restrictions. It would not alleviate the spot zoning issue. It would alleviate the mobile home portion, I guess what I said. Mobile home park, yes. Park, yeah. Okay. Chairman, can I ask yes, you a question? Yes, go ahead. Phil, before we go further, not being familiar with the residences around this Maddie's property, is the is a home that, in your opinion, that she intends to be to construct in keeping with the general nature of the neighborhood? No. Um, our staff um, in the building inspection office looked at her request and identified that it was a manufactured home, which would not be allowed in that area, and there are no manufactured homes on Camden Drive. I think I saw a lot of brick homes, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. But it would still be a single family residence. Not by our definition, no, sir. Even though she would be the only one there, it is a manufactured home, not, it's yeah. not a trailer, in other words. There are three categories uh, single family stick built home, that's general construction to the building code. Then you have a manufactured home, and then you have a, a mobile home. Okay. There's also modular, but modular is just the same standard as a stick built home. Right. Modular is allowed everywhere. Um, however, manufacturing mobile homes would not be allowed in this case. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Council? Mr. Cannon, do you want to say anything further? Oh, Mr. Charles, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going. I was going to ask a question. Go ahead. Then, would it be more beneficial then to change it from R one to R three? AG3, I think, is the... AG3, yeah, the AG3, yeah. Uh, from, well, from, a, from AG1 to AG3, in order that she will have what she needs there. Uh, the the what she's going to have for yes. a nine acre. More feasible to Mr. do. Mr. Levin, would you... AG3. Would AG3 more compatibly fit with what her request has been? Okay. It would be more compatible, but it does not alleviate the concerns that were identified by the planning commission and that you may hear from um, the other individuals right. that appears to be at a problem here. Okay. okay. Mr. Chairman, All right. Council, any other questions? Mr. Cannon? All right. I, from, Cannon, from the Cannon Drive perspective, we would be more comfortable with the AG3 for the 1.9. Okay. And since that's the subject tonight, and only subject, All right. that's what we're concerned about. Okay. Um, come, down to, come down to the other business, 
then um, you know we have to work with that. Okay. All right, thank and you. you're right. We're only dealing with the 1.95 acres. Everything right. else around it, we're remain uh, R1. Thank you very kind. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Anyone else here would like to speak in favor or oppose that to this rezoning? You're speaking in favor or opposed to the rezoning of Cannon Road? Uh, opposing. Okay, state your name and your address. Uh, my name is Millage Morton. Can y'all hear me? Okay, good. Okay, good. 210 Cannon Road, Greenwood. Okay. Yes. Uh, some 50 years ago or plus, I was, I was getting ready to build a home at Cannon Road. Yes, and this was back in 1968, and I was informed at that time by my father-in-law, Y.J. Cannon. He said, Morton, you can build a house, but you can't put a trail on it. So that sort of put me in a limbo. I had to make a decision. So I asked, uh, do it need to be a brick house or a wood frame house? He said, it could be either one. So I ended up building a brick house. And during that time, everyone else in the community either had a brick home or a wooden frame home yep. at that time. So what, everyone need a place to stay, whether you're renting or whether you're buying or whatever. Uh, my heart goes out for those that put their life on the line to own a home, yes. yeah, whether it's a trailer home, mobile home, or whatever. We need a place to live, sure. but in an area where it's been zoned to RG3, where there's one acre land or more, I'm in favor of that. So with Ms. Robinson, RG1, I know it's a qualified, but I prefer the RG3 because she does have approximately two acres of land that she want to put a home on. So the RG3 will fit that way. I don't have any objection to the RG1, but the RG3 would be more fit with the property that she have. She also said she, she she also stated that she have approximately 15 acres of land. I have no way of knowing that, but based on what she said, so I don't see where the RG3 is going to play a problem with the other part since it's dealing with the 1.9 acres of land. So okay. I'm going to agree with RG3 being the way it was set up. And once again, I'm hoping that she's able to get her home built, you know, to her qualification sure. because she's spent a lot of time with her husband at that time. Then she ended up losing her husband. So she still wants to build a home, and I'd like to see her build a home there. But I prefer to be RG3. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mr. Morton. Okay, does anyone else like to speak against this zoning? All right, then, Council, what is your pleasure? We have before us the Ordinance 2133 to change 121 Cannon Road, 1.95 acres of it. From R1 single family to AG1. That's the motion before us. Chairman, I'm going to offer a motion that we amend that. Okay. And that what we consider yeah. for our vote is that we um, ask council to vote on, on changing it from R1 to AG3. Okay. Okay. I can agree with that. Okay. Ms. Charles is good with that. Oh. in her district. Any oh. other? You make that in the form of a motion? Yes, sir. All right. We have a motion to amend. Second. Second. Ms. Giles seconds it. Any discussion? Uh, is it out of order to ask other residents that might be here just to give any more input? So well, they've had a chance to come and speak in favor or against. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you want to identify them personally or not. But I, I didn't know. I just know we had a good crowd. So. I think... Everyone who wants to speak has spoken. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the floor that we change this ordinance that we amended from R1 to AG3. 
Uh, Mr. Manager, Ms. Turney, with an amended, do we need to, how do we dispense with this? Mr. Chairman, I would recommend that you take a vote to amend and that if that is affirmative, then you take a vote to approve the amendment. Okay. Then there's a, a motion to amend from R1 to AG3. All in favor of amending, go ahead and say aye. 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 All right. Everybody's in favor of amending AG3. The amendment has been made. Now we will entertain a motion to vote on the ordinance. To approve as amended. Right. As amended. Chairman, can I ask one question? You may. You may. Mr. Lindler, we've heard no one actually speak in objection tonight to the to her home. What they object to is just simply the zone the zoning aspect of that. Did any other people come before the planning and zoning board since they did recommend the now, but they're not here tonight? They're either not here tonight or not speaking against the request. We had uh, four people speak in opposition. Do you think that opposition was not so much against that as the misunderstanding about the type of house or building. I can't speak to that. I think that's what it was, a misunderstanding. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I can see that. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion to approve the amended ordinance. We the ordinance as amended. Well, we need one. We don't have one yet. Mr. Chair? Yes? I so move that we accept the change um, and that ordinance. The, ordinance. All right. and that. the amended ordinance. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Lane gives us a second. Any further discussion? Then all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And it is so ordered. Thank you very much. The next item under public hearing is ordinance 2134. And this concerns approximately 0.38 acres located at 3704 <coughs> McCormick Highway. The request is to change the zoning from RDD, which is Rural Development District, to C1, which is Neighborhood Commercial. Before we move here to that speaking for our guests, Mr. Lindley, would you come forward and at least give us a little explanation here? Thank you. This uh, request on McCormick Highway is in the Farnes Land Community. Um, it is uh, brought to you by Thomas Hughes. Um, this property has been utilized as a convenience store for a number of years. Uh, the property owner wishes to sell the business and retain ownership of the back portion of this property. They own the adjacent piece of property to the southwest. Um, they want to incorporate the back portion of this property into that property. But in order to sell the property on the front, it's smaller than one acre, which is uh, the minimum lot size for the zoning district. Um, so the request before you tonight is change the property from RDD to C1 Neighborhood Commercial to allow for the continued use of the convenience store um, and uh, the proposed sale of that, that property to another entity with a smaller lot size than one acre. Planning Commission would recommend approval. So, uh, so that I understand, looking at your map there, you want to retain the, the convenience store, but everything behind it and in the red. In the red. Uh, okay. I guess we've been dealing with too many lots being divided and split, but uh, that's that whole piece of property. He can subdivide it into. Residential, I guess, is what he's planning, and uh, still retain his car, his store. No, he wants to sell the business and retain Not the back portion of his property to include into his residence. Okay. <clears throat> Council, have any questions? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lindley. We're in a public hearing, and uh, if there's anyone here who would like to speak in favor of changing this from RDD to C1 Neighborhood Commercial, hearing Mr. Lindler's explanation, please come forward. State your name and where you live. You're speaking in favor. 
Yes, sir, that's right. So, my name's Thomas Hughes. I live at 231 uh, Cambridge Avenue East. Okay. Um, I'm just here with uh, Mr. Thomas and his son um, just to speak in support of this, this rezoning. Um, he just wants to sell this business. It's been there for more than 50 years now. Um, and I'm just here to answer any questions y'all might have. I've got a plat, an updated plat, which would show you the parcel that's being cut off if y'all want to look at it. I'd like to see that. Makes more sense, I think. Okay. Council Clay on there, you want to see it? I'm good. It's yeah. good. It's better. Yeah. Thank you. Well, he just, he's only just the front part. That's right. Makes sense. All right. Do you have any further comments? I don't. Do y'all have any questions for me? No. The drawing is very helpful to me. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone here would like to speak against this proposed rezoning? All right. Hearing none, Council, what is your pleasure about changing 3704 McCormick Highway from RDD to C1? Chairman, I offer a motion to approve it. We have a motion by Mr. Lane to approve. Second, Second by Ms. Spitz Spencer and Ms. Charles. Any further discussion or comment? Then all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed by the same sign, there is no opposition, and that is so ordered. Thank you all very much. And uh, I will now need a motion that we end our public hearing. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And we are now out of public hearing and into new business. First item under new business consideration of appointment of members to the Gleams Commission. Mr. Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Chairman Motes. Uh, we're now at the point where council needs to appoint their two positions to the Gleams Board in compliance with Section 43-41. That's one zero code. Currently, Betty, uh, City Councilwoman Betty Bowles, County Councilwoman Melissa Spencer, and former Mayor Robert Adams are your three individuals that serve representing Greenwood County. You appoint two of those three. So if Council would like to keep those three in, on the board, uh, I believe one way to solve that issue is to Approve Wellman Adams for the low income position, uh, Councilwoman Spencer for the private sector, and lead Councilwoman Betty Bowles in the public sector. All right. Questions from Council about these appointments? You understand what we're doing? Ms. Bowles stays at public, Ms. Spencer goes to private, Mr. Adams, low income. Is there a motion that we accept this appointment? The so move, Mr. Chair. Mo so motion move, Mr. by Ms. Charles. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Lane. Any comments? Everyone good? Then all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that is so ordered as well. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. Yes, sir. The next item is consideration of appointment of special tax district commissioners for the Loxley Hall subdivision. Ms. Dorn. Oh, there you are. Can't see. Uh, Mr. Tony Booth and Mr. Kim Curry from District 6. Uh, Tony Booth is a reappointment, and Kim Kirby is a new appointment for a commissioner that expired in November. Okay. And that is my gift to Mr. Chairman. I'll be motion to approve. Okay. We have a motion to approve from Mr. Templeton, which is his district. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Pruitt. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed by like sign. And that is so ordered. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Next item is consideration of a construction contract for a boat ramp. Mr. Josh Skinner, come and tell us what you want to do. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Council. 
we have before you a contract for uh, the boat ramp construction on Highway 221 on Lake Greenwood. This is the same contract that was in your packet last uh, council meeting when it was tabled for the election. Um, congratulations to Councilman Pruitt. Um, but the contract hasn't changed. Uh, two weeks ago, we were about $112,000 short of the contract. Uh, yesterday, we got some good news from the uh, legislative delegation, and they uh, funded that additional money plus a little bit for contingency. Um, so we have the contract amount of 1.816 fully funded. Those funds came from um, uh, state uh, DNR statewide money that was specified for Greenwood County. Um, so a um, a. Uh, Brief breakdown of the contract. Uh, the original bid on December 7th was for $1.85 million. That was from MAR Construction. We have the president of MAR, uh, Mr. Robert Walls, came down from Newberry tonight if there's any questions for him. Um, and we appreciate that. But um, uh, after talking with uh, MAR, we were able to get that number down to 1.816. Uh, so that was a reduction of about $40,000. Uh, funding for the, the project um, comes from the capital project sales tax, 720,000. Uh, the SCDNR US Fish and Wildlife Grant, 682,000. Uh, state appropriations, um, which was um, part of the state budget, 300,000. And then the, um, the uh, the NR funds that were approved yesterday. So, uh, you ready to go? Yeah, yeah, we're ready to go. If you have any questions for me or Mr. Laws, we'd be happy to answer them. Mr. Laws, we welcome you to our council meeting tonight. Thank you for being here. Does council have any questions for Mr. Laws or Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Skinner? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Skinner, Mr. Long, has there been any discussion about maybe tightening up the time frame? I think I read in the contract 210 days. Right. Uh, we haven't talked about that. Um, I think we did discuss it actually. We thought, yeah, I mean, late, lately we've been giving contractors. Come up to the board for Mr. Laws. Uh, lately we've been giving contractors more time because of the difficulty in obtaining materials. Um, but you did not request more time. I have not. Um, I think at this point, we we feel like we could do it in the amount of time for sure. Nobody can tell weather what would happen. There's a good bit of this is grading, so we all know if we have wet winter, freezing, that will cause problems. But at this point, if everything goes good, normal seasonal weather, we would be fine. Summer is the thought. That's all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, I, and there was some discussions of possibly trying to get the boat ramps definitely moving, even if, you know, the bathroom facility might be delayed because of manufacturing. Uh, there's a manufactured uh, bathroom facility. If something like that got delayed, we would try to push to get the parking lot and get the facility at least up, up and going. Sure. Okay. As, as quick as possible. Okay. Good. Thank you. So, so we're talk, we're looking at immediate groundbreaking this month, correct? Yes, sir. And closing out end of July timeframe, roughly. Yeah, two hundred ten days from. Yeah, I think we was talking about mid January start. You know, roughly two weeks from time of getting the contract. And we were given information that you will potentially be subcontracting some work in the work. Yes, sir. You, you, you're betting four or five different um, providers for that body of work? Yes, sir. Have you made a selection yet? I have there? not at this time. Do you anticipate that causing you any delay? No, sir. No, we have to order the dock first, so it's manufacturing time of the dock gives me plenty of time to make the selection. I mean, it won't take me long. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Council, any other questions? Then are you prepared to make a motion? I am, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
being that most of that district falls into my territory and um, having asked a lot of questions to the residents and constituents in that area, I felt like this is a much needed uh, request, uh, additional recreational space for the boat ramp and uh, especially new restroom facilities. So I'd like to uh, make a motion and in light of the excellent job you did yesterday, job for uh, Josh presenting to the uh, legislative de delegation, securing the additional funding and um, contingency. So I make a motion that we accept the uh, the proposal as presented by Mr. Stern. We have a motion to accept the contract uh, for construction of the boat ramp. Second, Mr. Chair. Mr. Lay seconds Second. that. Uh, any further discussion? Second. You folks hear it back, Mark? Yes, he, was out. he was second. Okay, all right. Good. We have a motion and a second. Then all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, my light sign. And that is so ordered. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Josh. Good job. I'll reiterate what uh, Councilman Pruitt said there. You did a good job standing up to those legislators yesterday. You got the money out of them. That's a hard thing to do. <laughs> with a little help. I know, with a little help. I wasn't going to give him my horn to, but okay. <laughs> All right, the next and final item of new business is resolution 22 01 to amend fiscal budget, fiscal year budget 2022, uh, transferring funds between the hospitality tax and the capital project sales tax fund for the voting access facility. Ms. Dorn is here to help us. Thank you, Chairman. My first request would be that we amend the resolution in light of the funding that has become available through the um, legislature okay. legislation. And the resolution needs to be to amend the fiscal year 22 capital project sales tax fund budget for the boating access facility. The details of that are that we are accepting the $203,000 allocated at yesterday's meeting and also the previous 300,000 allocation from the um, state fiscal year 22 budget. This will allow us to actually expend, accept and expend those funds uh, within the capital project sales tax fund. Right. Council understand our explanation that we have to have this resolution in order to receive the money that has been earmarked for us. All right, you've heard Ms. Dorn's explanation. Uh, Amending the resolution, is there a motion that we accept her proposal? Move to approve as presented by the treasurer. Thank sure. you very much. Second. Second. Lane. Second by Mr. Templeton. <coughs> Any other comments or questions? And all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed by similar sign. Mark. Okay. And that is so ordered. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Pending items tonight. Appointments of members to the Joint Planning Commission District 2. Mr. Allison just left us. We actually lost District 2 and 3. We lost your connection. Okay, let's talk about. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. Let's consider the. While we're waiting on the reattachment of that, let's. Uh, consideration of the appointments of the. Greenwood County Public Library Board from District 5 and our newest council member is here to make a recommendation. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I'd like to recommend Ms. Uh, Kathy Chalmers um, to fulfill that seat that is available. I second that from District 5. Thank you. We've got a recommendation and a second from Mr. Templeton. Any questions? And all in favor say aye. 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 And Ms. Chalmers is duly appointed to the Greenwood County Library Board. Uh, Mr. Allison, I don't know if he has a member that he would like to recommend. Put that back in. We may just have to postpone that. Okay. I'm willing to postpone it. Council agrees. The other one is consideration of members of the Joint Board of Zoning Appeals and an at-large facility or position. Anyone here? Would like to make a recommendation for that? Yes, sir, Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, there we go. Let me back. Go oh. ahead. 
Tom. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Allison, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can now. I lost it for a while, but I'm now, back on. Can you, do you have an appointment for the Joint Planning Commission from your district? No, sir, I do not. I have made several calls, but as of tonight, I do not. We will continue to hold that until you're ready. What was that, Mom? All right. What was that? I didn't hear. I didn't hear it because I was off. Well, what did you miss? We appointed. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't. I didn't hear anything. Okay. Miss Kathy Chalmers has been appointed to the Greenwood County Library Board. Uh, that oh, was a recommendation okay. that. from our newest council member, Mr. Pruitt, District Five. Oh, okay. And then. Well, see, I didn't hear. Okay, that's fine. And then. All right. Miss, uh, Mr. Mr. Allison does not have a, an appointment recommendation for his district to the Joint Planning okay. Commission. We're holding that. Okay. And now we're okay. ready to appoint someone to the Joint Board of Zone of the BCA. And Mr. Uh, Lane has a recommendation. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Steve Cohen, if you'd please step forward. Um, I want to thank the council for allowing me to bring forward this nomination to our uh, Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, I'm offering Mr. Steve Coleman as a candidate. I've had a conversation with Steve. He's accepted uh, that service. Um, Steve uh, holds a master's degree in education. He's been involved in higher education for about 25 years now. And that's hard to believe he's that old. Thanks, Steve. But um, uh, Steve's been a tremendous community leader in Greenwood County. He's best known, I guess, in his recent current role as director of Models Academy at Piedmont Technical College, but um, Steve, I know has served as the uh, the uh, chairman of the Multicultural uh, Center uh, some while back, and uh, I think he will be a, a tremendous asset to the Board of Zoning Appeals. I have explained to him that it's the only uh, board uh, appointed by this body to which we cannot overrule. So it's a tremendous responsibility. So Steve, thank you. I'm assuming that you will be you will be elected, but I will ask the council now if they I will make a motion that we uh, we approve that appointment. Since Mr. Coleman lives in District Six, I'll be more than happy to second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second to appoint Mr. Coleman to the BZA at large. How long is his service? I think that's four year term, isn't it? It says three. Three year term. Three. three. Okay. Well, he's young, he'll get the So he knows. <laughs> All right. Anybody have a question of Mr. Coleman or before we vote? What did she say? 78. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All in favor of appointing Mr. Coleman to that position, say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that is so ordered. Congratulations, Mr. Goldman. Thank you, sir. Thank it's you. close. Thank, Thank you, sir. Hope all your elections are that well. Uh, <coughs> all right. The next item is district reports. District one, Ms. Child. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, I'd like to say happy New Year's to all of you. And I do pray that we will have a better year. Uh, also, congratulations to Councilman Pruitt for uh, being elected to his seat in District 5. And just a reminder, I'm home because I was in contact with two individuals at two different times with COVID. So I'm self-quarantined. I've already been tested. Now I'm waiting for the result. And all I, I ask you all to wear your mask, social distance, and wash your hands. And then to say thank you to you all for your support that you've given me tonight and most of the time in the past. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time. Amen. But most that's okay with time. him. And also to ask you for another favor. Dr. Benjamin J. Dover, who was the principal of the Brewer High School and the assistant superintendent for uh, District 50, uh, would like to do a proclamation of him. He was the last of all of the 
uh, officials in that era. He was 99 when he passed. So the service will be on um, Saturday. So we'd like to do a proclamation for him and his family. And to and I also, if things go well, I plan to help uh, Dr. Moats over there on uh, Mathis Road this weekend. I just have to find out the time and the day to clean up over there. So At three o'clock. Uh, give me a buzz and let me know what time I'm supposed to be in where. Three. Thank you. That ends my report. Three p.m. Three p.m. When? Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. At Lowe's. Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. Okay. All right. Is that in your report? That is it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. District 2, Mr. Allison, you're right there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to also uh, welcome Mr. Pruitt to the council. I uh, hate that I was not able to be there tonight and witness his swearing in, but I welcome him and uh, want him to know that we're looking forward to working with him uh, as a new member of council. So uh, welcome and just want to say thank you for allowing us. We'll say thanks to Tom and for Susan yeah. uh, for this technology of uh, getting me set up because I would not be here tonight exactly. <laughs> if it had not been for their help. Um, so thank you for for allowing me to be able to stay at the house tonight and do this meeting. That is my report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Allison. Appreciate it. District three, please. I too want to say congratulations, Mr. Pruitt, for the award, and happy New Year to everybody. And I have the report. Okay, thank you, District five. Do you have a report, sir? I do. I want to say thank you, thank you to the thank yous, and uh, also. Uh, uh, I said this before to the newspaper. It's it's always humbling and uh, it's an honor for your constituents to elect you to any office at any level. Um, done it on the school board level and now county council, and it, it never gets old to uh, to acknowledge that. And uh, I hate that our crowd left, but um, had a real good contingent at the swearing in. I hate we had to do it so early. It's just my little shot there. Um, but uh, others missed, but uh, we had a good showing, and I was very appreciative of those that did show up for the uh, swearing in. I was uh, pleased to once have my wife hold the Bible that was read by my father every day, so that meant a lot to me. Um, appreciate the constituents, and I'll report more at a later date. That ends my report. Thank you, Mr. Brood. District 6. Yes, sir. You know I have a report. First and foremost, I want to congratulate my friend Dane. And I want to apologize for being late to his swearing in because he ain't never going to let me forget it. <laughs> um, but uh, Dane's a great guy, and I've known him a long time. And he mentioned his father today. He was a great man. And um, like I said, hey, I missed it. Poor timing on my part. Now, as you guys know, it is... That time, come on now, give me a little more than that. Coleman's hiding his face back there. That's one. All right, all right. So, Food Fight 2022, it has officially begun. And, uh, I need everybody's help to get as much food as we possibly can. Tom, you might want to get this. Because I'm calling out you, Mr. Mayor. That's right, B. I'm coming for you. You're going to help me help the county and the city knock out hunger. <laughs> so bring it on. Let's get this done. It doesn't matter who wins the contest. What does matter is that we're ready to get a lot of food and... Um, for all these organizations and make it happen. So uh, be on the lookout for more to come. Uh, the mayor and I have talked and we will be uh, lighting up social media with things to try to get folks excited about making this friendly competition um, serve the need that we have in this community with hunger. 
Thank you, sir. Is this available for people to know where to go and take the different things? Do you have the files in front of you? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Brandon's going to get, the mayor's going to get back with me about where the city folks can take their food. I think what we've determined here is we're going to do like we have always. Susan, sorry. And I think it's on there, though. Is it on here? Weigh in, yeah. Is, yeah. Oh, yep, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. We just want to get this out. Yeah, that's all. So. Yep. So anyway, I'll, we'll, be, we'll be distributing. And yes, sir. How can the uh, I'm glad you asked that, Mr. Coleman. Collect some food. Just yeah, basically, they can, and I, I, I was on the phone today. I was on the phone, but I was conversing today with District 50 about how the schools can get involved. Um, so um, I talked to my place of business, County Bank, about trying to get them involved. We're looking for anybody and everybody to get involved, and, and this is a community effort. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a friendly competition. I know everybody wants that coveted can of corn, you know, trophy to, to, to host. But that's not what it's really all about. So it's, it's a community effort. Uh, it'll be hard to follow Miss Child because she's done a yeoman's job for years in leading this process. But we're going to try to make it happen anyway. And I'll take any and all comers. Thank you all so much. And it's my fault. I was looking at your brochure. You sure it tells us where to take it? No, it tells you who it's benefiting. It doesn't tell you where we're taking it. We're going to. Oh, it doesn't have it on there. It doesn't have it on there. The mayor has not. And the mayor and I will. Um, we're going to work on that from the city side and the county side will operate the same way we have in years past. Bring it to Susan. Yes, sir. Hey. <laughs> it's shopping day. District 7. District 7. Thank you, Chair. I'm amazed we got through all that rah rah without a Clemson reference. But uh, <laughs> I got to know you more. Jane, congratulations. Glad to have you with us. Um, uh, again, thank you to the council for approving Steve's appointment. He's going to do a great job. I think uh, I've been out of town a little recently, but I think all is well in District 7. Um, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Lane. Uh, my report, I wanted to share with Council that uh, our colleague, Ms. Edith Childs, was honored recently in Greenville by the Clearview Simpson Heritage Foundation up at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. Uh, the Simpson Heritage Foundation recognizes accomplished black high school alumni in South Carolina. And this foundation has gifted many scholarships to talented college-bound college students in the upstate. What an honor for Ms. Childs, and we certainly congratulate her on that honor. And uh, we're proud to know you. Uh, indicated that when she was introduced, the MC shouted, Fired up! Guess what the audience said in return? Ready to go. I know that was quite an event for you, Miss Tyler. You had a good time there, and we we're proud of you. Congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. But you had it there because she wasn't here, and you wanted a picture of it, Miss Tyler. No, no. I don't know what Miss Tyler's looks like. Also, I want to con congratulate Mr. Pruitt on his election to the fifth seat in the, the District Five, and. Uh, we look forward, all of us, and expressed our uh, willingness, our opportunity to work with you during these, this term, and uh, any way we can help you, any way questions we can answer for you, I certainly hope you will feel free to ask and reach out. But we're delighted you're here. Thank you for your service to Greenwood County, not only here, but also on the school board of United Six. We appreciate your civic mindedness Thank very you. much. Uh, for my report, I, I have jotted down some thoughts. Uh, it, it's the beginning of a new year, and I guess all of us, well, most all of us make New Year's resolutions and then promptly forget them, I know. Uh, but I think we all have wishes for the new year. Uh, we wish and hope for certainly good health, health and the end of this blame pandemic. Uh, we wish safety from harm and from adversity that might impact us. We wish for job security where we work. We wish for happiness, peace, goodwill. Well, my wish for 2022 going forward, especially for my colleagues here on County Council, is that we will all find a way to work towards collaborative responses to the challenges that we will surely face 
in the months ahead. It's painfully clear that the divisiveness and parochialism that has literally engulfed every aspect of our lives does absolutely nothing to improve or sustain anything positive or beneficial. And we waste our time with it. The truth is, folks, as a community, a state, and nation, we have so much potential, so much talent, so much ability, so much possibility, that frankly, we all need to work together to harness that power and greatness so that it benefits everyone. Personal or political party agendas, ideology, or crass misinformation should never drive our decision-making abilities. Doing what is best for our citizens, for our community, should be the determining factor in all our actions and decisions. I believe St. Paul said it best when he wrote to the Philippians. And he said, whatever is true, whatever is just, right, proper, worthwhile, and worthy, focus on those things. And I think those same factors should be paramount in our considerations as we move forward in the new year. That's my wish for 2022, and I invite all of you to join me with me as we work to that end. And that ends my report. Mr. Manager, do you have a word? I do not, sir. Ms. Madam Attorney? No report, sir. No report. Madam Clerk? I do have one reminder of the Please. proclamation that um, Councilwoman Childs referred to for Mr. Dover. Do we want to approve that? I'll be preparing that for her to present on Saturday. So um, do we want to approve it as a council? Do we have it before us? We don't because I'm, I'll be preparing and I'll be typing it when I get uh, the information. Council, I'm reluctant to approve something I haven't read or seen, but I have no doubt that what Ms. Childs is proposing is appropriate and proper. Uh, What's your favorite? It's a proclamation, not a resolution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would, say, I would have no problem with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone pretty? It's fine. All right. Is there a motion that we approve the proclamation pending? For Give the man's name again, Mr. Um, B.J. Dr. B.J. Dover. Dr. B.J. Dover. That's right. Proclamation for Dr. B.J. Dover to be presented by Ms. Childs. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved, Chair. Mr. L Mr. Lane, is there a second? Second. Second. Well, Mr. Tilton, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed by like sign in that is so ordered as well. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Any other business? No, sir. Then this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Where are all? Good to see you.